Hmm, I need a great idea, but where do I start? Maybe a story about a family, and it can start with a kind of grand song and dance number, and the show can have an evil baby that sometimes... Oh wait, yeah, that's not going to work. Hmm, this is hard. Ah, got it. Just do a story about some neighbors that just kind of hang out in the alley and drink beer and talk about their lives. And then, damn, that's not going to work either. Hey, Ben. You know, it is lunch break. What are you doing? Oh, uh, not much. Just got this uh, cartoon project that I'm working on. Cartoon? Ha! <laughs> All you millennials think that you can just do stuff and are afraid to just work. Unbelievable. <laughs> Millennials, you say? Hmm. The Millennials! Dope! Oh. Hey, Ben. Oh. Hi, Ryan. How's it going? Fine. But I didn't come over here to talk to you. Oh, sorry. I... Thought you said... Jeez, shut up, man. I know what I said. Anyway, I've got something to talk to you about. So, you did come over here to talk to me? No. Do I need to text it to you? I did not come over here to talk to you. I came over here to talk to my subordinate. Anyway, I'm sure that you've heard that the company is looking for a new CEO, and your name has come up in those discussions. Really? My name came up in discussions for a CEO? Not for CEO, you entitled fuck. <laughs> Can you imagine you as a CEO? Oh, I'm Ben. I'm a CEO of a major corporation, even though I cry myself to sleep thinking about my crushing student loan debts. <laughs> That's you. That's what you sound like. <laughs> I disagree. Yeah, nobody cares. Anyway. About the CEO discussion, which is a position that you could never, ever, ever hope to have, ever. It seems that the board is concerned that the company is not appealing to the millennials for some stupid reason. If you ask me, we are better without your generation. Whew. America really dropped the ball with you people. Okay, kind of weird. Still not clear what my part is. In all of this, they want you to sit in on an interview with one of the potential candidates and share your opinion. Oh, okay. I need to get prepared. Do some research, uh, rent a suit. Uh... Yeah, let me just stop you right there. The interview is today. You have about 10 minutes. 10 minutes? But I. And if anyone asks, I told you about two weeks ago. Good luck. Your job is on the line. My job? <laughs> Just kidding. But seriously, it could reflect poorly on you, so don't make a fool of yourself. Oh, you must be Ben. Thank you for joining us. Thanks. I'm looking forward to the experience. So, who is it that we're going to be interviewing today? You didn't read the packet or get the resume? Oh my, really, are we? Oh, well, it's okay. He's from a different generation. They do things differently. Live in the moment. It's cool. Whatever you say. Generation? These guys are like 10 years older than me. We have a great candidate today. A businessman with years of experience. His name is Ronald Bump. There he is. The Ronald has arrived. The Ronald? Hello, Mr. Bump. Thank you for sharing some of your time with us here today. This is my associate. Hello, Mr. Bump. It is an honor to meet you. And this is Ben. Happy to meet you. Thank you all for having me. You're all great people. Really great people. And I know great people. I know the, the best, greatest people. And you, you people are the best. Well, I suppose we should get started. Absolutely. Ask me anything. I am really a very open person. People tell me that all the time. People. Some of the smartest, most successful people. Not that that matters, but it's true. They tell me. They tell me that I'm very open and honest about everything. So... Ask me anything. So tell us, what do you see as your greatest weakness? Uh, I trust people too much. I'm too trusting. And when they let me down, if they let me down, I never forgive. 
I find it very, very hard to forgive people that deceived me. I don't know if you would call that a weakness, but that's my answer. What do you see as your greatest strength? My genius. Some people would say that I'm very, very intelligent. I went to the Wharton School of Business. I'm like a really smart person. Seriously? This is what a CEO candidate sounds like? How would you address our competitors? It is their level of stupidity that is incredible. I'm telling you. I used to use the word incompetent. Now, I just call them stupid. I went to an Ivy League school. I'm very highly educated. I know words. Come on, Ronald. Use your words. I know words. I have the best words. I have the best. But there is no better word than stupid, right? Right? There is none. There is none. There's no, there's no word like it. That's the word that came to my mind. Tell me about a time you made a mistake. Saying sorry for me is very difficult. It was too many years ago to remember. I am blessed with a great memory. I think apologizing is a great thing, but you have to be wrong. So if I am ever wrong, then I would apologize. But it was too long ago. What do you think would set you apart from the other candidates for this position? I think the only difference between me and the other candidates is that I'm more honest and my women are more beautiful. At our company, we strive to maintain a diverse and inviting culture. Some of your past employees have said some things to us about you that raise some concerns about how you may fit into our company culture. For example, one person said that you said, quote, laziness is a trait in blacks, and black guys counting my money, I hate it. The only kind of people I want counting my money are short guys that wear yarmulkes every day. Could you respond to that and your vision for diversity? Absolutely. I think that is a very, not very, really very, not very nice question to be asking me, but I will answer because I can, though I do not think that I really should have to. Uh, first of all, nobody has had worse things written and said about them than me, and here I am. That stuff that that employee said or wrote about me is probably true. The guy is a fucking loser. A fucking loser. I have a great relationship with the blacks. I've always had a great relationship with the blacks. You may have seen my African American here with me when I showed up. Let me tell you, a well-educated black has a tremendous advantage over a well-educated white in terms of the job market. I think sometimes a black may think they don't have an advantage or this and that. I've said on one occasion, even about myself, if I were starting off the day, I would love to be a well-educated black because I believe they do have an actual, an actual advantage. Holy shit. Is this happening? Do you know or have any kind of relationship with Sam Seisman? I do have a relationship, and I can tell you that he's very interested in what we're doing here today. He's probably very interested in what you and I are saying today, and I'm sure he's going to be seeing it in some form. Recently, I spoke indirectly and directly with Seisman, who could not have been nicer. He even sent me a present, a very beautiful present. So, you do have a relationship with Sam Seisman, CEO of one of our top competitors. I gotta get this. I have no relationship to with him. I have no relationship with him. I never met Seisman. I don't know who Sam Seisman is. Okay. What kind of CEO do you want to be? I want to be unpredictable. We need to win again. We don't win anymore. The point is that you can't be too greedy. I will make this company great again. That much I will tell you. My IQ is one of the highest, and you all know it. Please don't feel stupid or insecure. It's not your fault. So, how did the interview go? I heard the guy really knocked it out of the park. Didn't really seem like a good candidate to me. Well, the good thing for you is, if he does get the job, at least the CEO will know your name. Hmm. I didn't think about that. Oh, hey, look. A tweet. Ouch. You should probably go ahead and update your LinkedIn.